During the Thousand Year Blood War arc, we begin to truly appreciate the character of Unahana, understanding that she is far more than just a simple healer who stays on the sidelines. Her first and final battle within the pages of the manga reveals the impact that she had upon the sadistic Kimpachi Zaraki. We are introduced to a totally different version of Unahana, as Kubo effectively introduces us to a ghost from the past. During Kimpachi's battle against Unahana, we understand the difference between Unahana Retsu, the captain of the 4th division, and Unahana Yachiru, the former captain of the 11th division. She had also held the title as the first Kimpachi during this time. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about the mysterious Bankai that Unohana had revealed during her battle against Kimpachi, going over everything that we know about it from its one and only brief appearance within the manga, and speculating what more there was to the second release of Ozanbok Do. So join me as I break down the fearsome Bankai of Unohana Retsu. Before the video begins, only 20% of the people who actually watch my content are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, then subscribe and stick around for more content just like this. Now let's get back to the topic of the video. Unahana's Bankai is first revealed within chapter 526. Upon activation, the physical form of a Zanbakdo transforms into a liquid state, as it begins to pour out a dark red glue-like liquid, which I've interpreted as a Zanbakdo crying out tears of blood, as the floor around her is covered by this red liquid. In in order to better appreciate this form, we need to talk about her Shikai transformation and how it contrasts the powers of a Bankai. Udohana's Zanbakdo is called Minazuki. In its sealed state, it is longer than the average Zanbakdo, and it is evident that Kubo was paying homage to the traditional Japanese sword called the Odachi, which was used by the samurai of feudal Japan. Typically, she carries a blade over her shoulder, or she has a lieutenant Isane carry it around for her. The first release of a Zanbakdo is revealed within chapter 154, where we learn that a Zanbakdo Zanbakdo manifests a physical creature that is very similar to the Zanbakdo of Mairi and Komamura. In a Shikai state, her Zanbakdo transforms into an oversized manta ray. It is green in colour and most notably, it is one-eyed. We see her using the creature as a means of transportation as it has the ability to fly and additionally to grow a pair of legs which it uses to land onto the ground. We learn that a Shikai is centred around the ability to heal the injuries of others. She does so by placing the injured individuals into the mouth of Minazuki they are then swallowed by the creature and kept within its stomach. And we learn that the acid that is produced within its stomach has potent medicinal properties, as it acts like an ointment soaking over any wounds healing them. Minazuki is able to hold up to six people within its stomach, and thankfully it spits them back out with the command of Unohana. Now it does make me wonder whether if a Shikai has an offensive side, as we never really see it being utilised in any other way within the manga. Could Minazuki adopt some of the offensive characteristics found within Stingrays? I would find it fascinating if a Shikai was revealed to have a stinger which is similar to real world sea rays. A stingray can have up to three spinal blades stored which are able to easily cut their target, while also secreting a venom that can cause their muscles to cramp. Indeed, his Shikai is incredibly unique and the inspiration for it is evident. It's just a shame that we didn't get to see more of it, because it may well have had an offensive ability inspired by the sea rays venomous sharp stinger. Unohana's Bankai was first revealed at the end hour. It was a brief brief transformation, but it was impactful enough to solidify Unohana as one of the strongest Shinigami, who is worthy of the title of being the first Kimpachi. After activating her Bankai, the liquid flowing off of a Zanpakdo spreads around her, with a blade solidifying into a slightly shorter size. Her Bankai power is contrasted against the healing stomach acid of a Shikai, and the liquid pouring from her Zanpakdo is revealed to be a strong acid that can burn away the flesh of someone as powerful as Kimpachi during their battle. In chapter 526, we see Minazuki melting Kimpachi with his hands reducing down to the bone, and the entire right side of his body becomes a skeleton. Now, Kimpachi had only survived here because of Unohana constantly healing him, making him come back stronger each time that he was healed. This technique allowed him to battle on the verge of death repeatedly, which was the only way to allow him to remove the subconscious barriers that he had placed upon himself, which had severely restricted his potential. Her Bankai, combined with her effective healing powers, allowed her to rapidly kill and revive Kimpachi, thus explaining why she was the perfect fit for training him, even if it had meant that she has to sacrifice herself in the process. Now this is the debt that Unohana had owed to Kimpachi.
Kimpachi for being responsible for the mental barrier that she had placed upon him, way back when they had fought years ago when Kimpachi was still a child. Unfortunately, Unahana's Bankai has a major drawback, which is that the stomach acid secreted from her Zambakdo also affects her. In chapter 526, we see her in a skeletal form clashing against Kimpachi. Now thankfully, she can counter this weakness by healing herself continuously thanks to being a master in healing Kido. Her Bankai can be best described as an acid that has the ability to melt anything away. In the past, she had the honor of becoming the first Kimpachi, followed by being the first captain of the 11th division. She was a notable member of Yamamoto's original Gotei 13, who had taken part in the first battle between the Shinigami and the Quincy 1000 years ago. After Unohana had battled against a young Kimpachi, she had found her successor and had felt unworthy of a title, so she had renounced her past life as a ruthless killer and she had learned advanced healing techniques from Tenjiro Kirinji. Kirinji was responsible for inventing two different types of healing hot springs. The first is a clear hot spring where he submerges his injured patients where all of their damaged reatsu begins to pour out of their body. The clear hot spring serves to drain all of the bad out of the patient's body, similar to cupping therapy where bad blood is removed from the body. Now this is followed by a second steaming hot spring that resembles a pool of boiling blood. This second bath helps to restore any blood that was lost during the clear hot spring. Now while it was introduced as a means of healing, Cringy is also able to alter the temperature of his hot springs and use it to burn his opponents as seen in chapter 588. Now if Cringy is able to manipulate his healing hot springs, then similarly Unohana should be able to adjust the stomach acid of the manta ray which he had used in a shikai state. The Bleach data book 13 blades describes her bankai as being able to transform a zombakdo into a liquid state that surrounds the entire area. The name of a bankai Minazuki translates to the phrase all things end. When Kimpachi clashes with her, immediately after she activates her bankai, he notices that he is melting. Her bankai is best appreciated when you understand that a bankai complements and builds upon a user's shikai. We see this with Soifon's shikai that allows her to take out her target with two strikes, and her bankai builds upon this by giving her this oversized cannon with enough power to one hit kill an opponent. Renji's bankai is probably the best example of one that is literally a larger version of their shikai. So Unohana's shikai has the ability to heal with Minazuki stomach acid, so it may be possible that the manta ray stomach acid can become corrosive while in a bankai state, thus enabling her to melt anything, as well as being able to create as much of the acid as she wants to. Some have also speculated that she wasn't using Kido to heal herself in Kimpachi during their battle. Instead, the acid produced by her bankai has the ability to harm and heal, thus making a bankai perfect for prolonging any encounter. We know that a key running theme that exists between the characters of Unohana and Kimpachi is that neither of them had wanted their battle to end. Now this idea of a never ending drawn out battle enjoyed by two of the strongest may well help to explain the ability of a bankai, as this best describes the desire of someone who holds the title of Kimpachi. So a bankai that has the ability to fulfill this desire would be very fitting for the first Kimpachi Unohana. Another great theory that combines the ability of a Shikai and Bankai involves her Zambakdo having the ability to absorb the blood and wounds of all of the individuals that she heals in its Shikai state. Now this blood is then stored and mixed with the healing stomach acid of the Manta Ray, which then becomes the corrosive blood that pours out of her Zambakdo when it's in its Bankai state. Now as a theory, this makes a lot of sense to me, because traditionally blood stemming from wounds is impure, and it is associated with negativity, so it may well have the potential to transform a healing substance into a corrosive one. This idea of her storing the negative energy from damaged blood and wounds that she heals within a shikai state is an excellent theory behind the true ability of a bankai, which is to melt everything away. Now while all of this is fascinating to think about, unfortunately all of the ideas expressed here are just educated theories and speculation, based on what we know about Unohana and her powers. Unohana's bankai was never properly explained within the manga, and it was literally revealed in the same chapter that she was defeated in. Things were understandably left vague and very unclear, while some had even argued if the bodies of Unohana and Kimpachi were reduced to skeletons during their fight, or if all of this was just a hallucination. People usually complain when characters within Bleach, like Shinji, deliver long exposition dumps explaining their powers, but they also complain just as much after Unohana had activated a Bankai and there was no explanation or exposition dump. We just have to piece together what we are seeing and try to interpret it with all of the information that we have. I have no doubt that the battle between Kimpachi and Unohana will be incredible within the anime, and hopefully with some added anime exclusive material, we will
will not only see more of a Bankai, but get a proper explanation of it. So what are your thoughts about the legendary Bankai of the first Kimpachi, Unahana Yachiru? Do you agree with some of my theories about how the healing stomach acid of a Shikai has been manipulated to become so corrosive that it could burn anything away? I would love to read all of your theories and speculation about a Bankai Minazuki, so definitely continue the discussion in the comments. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.